testing. Yeah. Sir, we understand uh, you have uh, spoken with uh, President-elect Rodrigo Duterte. What did you discuss, sir, and what are the preparations for his inauguration? You know, I don't know if I'm, uh, <laughs> I can speak for the preparations. I think his uh, spokespeople has been, have been talking about their preparations. It was a very short conversation, um, young members of his uh, staff no, uh, went to the executive secretary yesterday the executive secretary brought them to me. Um, we, did, mm, we shared some of our experiences in the past six years through them. We went through Malacanang to show them the physical layout. And then uh, we proceeded to Malacanang Park, uh, show them by Pangarap uh, and various facilities within Malacanang Park. And that's where uh, they, they got in touch with President-elect Duterte. We had a conversation, perhaps a short conversation, about a minute or so. No. wherein I congratulated him. I think we asked each other how we were. No. And I reiterated their offer to be of assistance no, in, in any and every manner that they, they deem fit. And uh, more or less that was a, it was a pleasant conversation. That's how it ended. No. Thanks, sir. follow-up? <laughs> okay, other topics? <laughs> Love Life New Martin? Um, you usually um, criticize the media or, or maybe express your um, parang misgivings or mga ganyan. But now, you treated us all to lunch. So, in your six years, what are the um, parang things that you want to tell us now also? After covering you for six years, what are the ups and downs for you when it comes to the media? You know, I, I, I think, hindi naman sip-sip sa inyo, no? pero I think we had a better deal with the Malacanang Press Corps rather than the outside <laughs> media elements. No? Yung, for the most part, I think you are reasonable. We understand where you're coming from. We understand the pressures from your various desks no? to produce uh, the story that they, they want. So, and you have, yung, I think you've treated us reasonably well. You have your pressures. You, you understand our concerns. And we've reached... Uh, a very good level of uh, working relationship. In contrast, this uh, the other day we were in Hulo. Um, it was a reporter, George Carino, asked uh, about the enhancements or refinements on our operations against the Abu Sayyaf, no? and uh, I responded uh, in very general terms, so as not to um, share, uh, you know, the the corrections that we're doing in our operations there with potentially the enemy forces. So. Most of them who were covering understood that. Then there was somebody, I don't remember his name, no, a male reporter, and then rephrased the question, but, but tried to elicit from me the details. No? So, you know, I said, I'm going to say, 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 Dahil parang binigay na natin blueprint sa kalabang kung paano na iiwasan natin ang ginagawa natin. So sa loob-loob ko lang, parang pare-pareho yung venue kung nasa kami, narinig naman niya yung sagot ko sa una, uulitin pa niya. Uh, I don't know, no? yung, the interest there was uh, yung, to get some sort of a scoop as opposed to, one would hope that we were all Filipinos there. This is a situation that affects the whole country. Perhaps we can yung, attend to the problem in a unified manner. So we had one viewpoint that the Abu Sayyaf do present an issue and a problem that impacts the country negatively. And as you know, fellow patriots, let us assist each other in resolving successfully the current situation. Pero yun nga, no? may, may short-term needs versus yung long-term interests of the country. So I'd like to reiterate, um, of course, you know, we had to get to know each other. You know, and through the six years, we've gotten to know how to address each other's needs so that we have reached uh, a happy state of affairs. Maka naman sobrang happy, pero I think uh, <laughs> definitely not a combative state of affairs. Ay, sir, pwede yung follow-up lang po dun sa kanina. Ano pong sinabi sa inyo ni Duterte? Uh, well, so, hindi, hindi naman ako nag-notes ng gusto, <laughs> no? And uh, I understand, yung in his inauguration, we will have a, a, probably a short conversation prior to his taking the oath. 
and I was reserving, and I, be, I guess he was also reserving all of the points that we do like to raise with each other for that meeting. Assume it pushes through. No? Sir, ano po sinabi niya nung inalok niyo po yung assistance niyo kung kakailanganin niya? Parang problema, siyempre hindi ko naman na-record yung conversation. <laughs> no? Pero parang kinatawa naman, hindi naman tinanggihan. At parang pinag, pinasalamatan yung alok natin. Mm -hmm. Na sabi ko, kung ano may tutulong namin sa inyo, no? kung ngayon, sa transition at saka pagkatapos, para hindi na kailangan, di ba? parang uh, reinvent the wheel, kumbaga. Ngayon yung, I, I'm sure, no? um, naalala ko naman nung ako'y tumakbo, uh, both times, uh, inintindi naman, in kaso tinulungan tayo ni, ni President-elect Duterte, including the presidency. No? Yung, we had one of our, one of the first major turnout of people happened in Davao. No? I'm not sure if it was Davao first and Zamboanga, and I think that was the sequence. Eh, no? Of course, yung, yung crowd in Dumaguete that filled up their very big park, or at least more than half of this very big park was the first, followed by Sambuanga and Dabao. I'm sorry, I don't recall which came first, but both of them really had massive turnouts of people. So, uh, when, when, when I get to see him, you know, and actually I, I communicated this to Attorney Medel Dea. No? Um, it is our hope that uh, the elections are over. No? This is, we share one country, We'd like them to be able to build upon all of the things that we have started, we have implemented, we have completed. Um, so we move you know, parang further along the path of advancement for our country and our people. And to that, no, I think every patriot should be looking towards helping the incoming administration address the problems that are still here and the forthcoming problems that undoubtedly will happen in you know, this period of uh, parang global challenges. Thank you, sir. After, after your term, you can attend to your lab life next. <laughs> and then, I also would like to ask, what will be, what will happen to LP? Will you be, will you strengthen your party after this? Traditionally, after no, after elections, the LP has a change of leadership. No? Um, and um, normally, it gravitates to the high, the most senior public official we have. So I would not want to admit it, no? pero I will be classified siguro as an elder, elder of the party. I'd like, I'd like to stress lang, I'm the youngest of the elders of the party. Pero yun nga, um, yung we still believe that we have a, that, that conversion of Philippine politics from one of personality to platform base will undoubtedly help the country and we'd like to contribute towards that. Okay. So you know, I don't know what my role will be in the party, but I'm sure they will want to say I'm one of their elders. <laughs> and uh, of course, we have, uh, we have uh, various members of the party or still active members of the party occupying different positions in government and we'd like to continue no, what has been done in these past six years and even one of the advocacies that we had before we entered uh, uh, as an administration. Now, Vice President-elect uh, Lenny Robredo is the highest official elect, elected official in your party that belongs to your party. Now, what will be her role? Uh, will she will she assume the chairmanship or what? That has not been discussed, no. But she is aware that she will take one of the most senior positions, and uh, the chairman is the highest position. But uh, in day-to-day activities are handled by the party president. So that will be decided by the party as a whole, but I'm sure she's aware that she will be getting one of the two most senior positions. And of course, yung, we have to ask her uh, her preferences for this. Yung, we, we recognize the value of each individual within the party. We don't force anybody to do anything. Your love life. Your love life. <laughs> <laughs> It's still the same. <laughs> no. Hi, sir. Well, may mga panahon, parang binabawi pa ngayon natitira sa light. Hi, sir. Uh, pwedeng magtanong lang, sir. Dun sa, kasi nabanggit yun na po yung LP. Yung uh, PDP Laban <coughs> is filing or in, has revealed plans to file uh, before the Supreme Court yung 
um, parang questioning yung decision ng COMELEC to extend yung sa SOSE. And it may uh, affect daw the, uh, all of the winners of the LP uh, and prevent them from coming into office. Kasi nga, uh, nag-file ng SOSE past the deadline. Um, so, are, are you concerned by this as party leader? Yeah, I think I'd like I'd have to refer you to our candidate, no, Mar Rojas, who would know more of the details there, number one. Yung, that's why the courts are there, to uh, judge yung any controversy. And yung, as to the charge, that, para the way it sounds, no, para the party adopted the position that we will not <coughs> file so say. <coughs> and, Di ba, parang the day, uh, supposed deadline, si Lenny Robredo actually had, had filed their stuff. So as one, that's, I think, representative, mo, I, I assume, and I believe most, if not all, filed upon the right, parang the right at the right time. Sure. So, Hindi yung, naman kaya magka-constitutional crisis because maiipit yung maraming mga senador, congressman, aside from the vice president. Right, I'd, I'd like to consult our lawyers, no? <coughs> <coughs> what I read is, and I, I, what I read in the media previously, you don't file on time. That's a, a penalty is when you file your next certificate of candidacy. <coughs> Medyo new sa akin yung may penalty uh, in this candidacy. So I'll have to check. Sir, kasi ngayon sa ASEAN, there is some, some um, confusion na medyo uh, nakakakaba din because of what after the meeting diba and security experts are in parang agreement na kayo naman talaga yung nagpush niyan sa with regard to the South China Sea so are you as you step down are you apprehensive sa nangyayari ngayon um, between ASEAN and China and let me just throw in this other question pa i remember 2 years ago you told um LJM that China was always on your mind. Parang yan yung priority mo. Sa pagbaba mo ba, sir, yan pa rin yung naiisip mo in your last two weeks in office? Naiisip, yes. No? Yung parati tayong curious kung ano nangyayari sa China uh, domestically, which might impact international relations. And everybody is presuming that there is a de decision by the arbitral tribunal that will come out sometime soon. Yung you want to see the, um, parang you, you want to try and have a picture of what the post-decision situation will be. You try to look at the uh, differences or the nuances of the messaging that comes out of China. Yung, at the end of the day, yung I'd want to have the country prepared you know, uh, to address this challenge, which is not a challenge I brought upon in this country. No? <laughs> From the 70s, this has already been a problem. And uh, I think we have done what we can to advance having a resolution that is fair to all parties concerned. How about the, the, the worrisome ASEAN-China situation now where the ministers met and then they took back the... I, you know, I have to... You know, uh, Secretary of Foreign Affairs uh, Almendras has started reporting to me uh, on what has what to court, no? So I'd like to get yung his take on it before I uh, make any comments. On was there a previous statement? Did they take it back? Was it modified? How was it modified? If so, what was the context? Yung. So I'll, I'm just guessing. So I'd rather ask him first, and he and wait, I'll await his report. Yung part of the time, because uh, that I've been yung handling matters are. Um, things like you know, my enrolled bills that have finally finished their, all their processes and are before me. Yung na highlight yung dalawang uh, binito natin. And then uh, I understand, I was talking to the speaker yesterday, and there are several others no, that I have to attend to before I step down. Yung aabot kasi yung lapse in tulo under my watch. No? So I'd like to make a firm decision whether to sign it into law, to let it lapse into law, or to veto the particular measure. Sir, walang tanong. Thank you lang po for the past six years na kasama ninyo yung MPC. At saka, naging accessible kayo sa amin for the for <laughs> past six years. Yun. Pwede, ako yung magpapaalam na sa inyo. No? At uh, magkita lang tayo somewhere down the line. No? 
Kung ikakasal na kayo, sa stag party niyo ako ibitahin, gano'n. <laughs> eh, <laughs> alam niyo, huwag ka natin rin yung ganyan, naalala ko kasi yung kwento ng, at gusto ko makita kung totoo yun eh. Allegedly, I had a girlfriend before na gusto rin ng mami, nagpabili ng tela, syempre puti, para sa kasal, uh, nando sa kanyang kuturi, na, na hanggang ngayon, nando pa rin sa kuturi niya, at ang kulay raw ay dilaw. So, gusto ko lang makakausap yung kuturi, ay nabuhay pa, may tanong ko na kung dilaw pa siya, o kung iba na, nagbago na naman yung kulay niya. At uh, para ma-share ko naman sa inyo, pag doon kong swerte yung tayo doon, share ko sa inyo kung ano ang color natin, color motif. Uh, <laughs> okay, again, thank you. No? And can I just say na, no? may, kung may, may times masungit si Sunny, or si Ray, or si Edwin, si Abby, si Ricky, si Manolo, oh, pati ako na rin. Yung, it was never personal, no? talagang kumisa na yan. Tao tayo lahat. Nagpatong-patong noong araw na yun. <laughs> yung mihina linaw sa panahon na walang linaw. Hiningi yung informasyon na hindi pwede ilabas. No? Yung, can I just, ano, I'll, can I just share with the one story, no? Yung uh, topic pa rin yung freedom of information. Yung umiikot kami, usual, bus terminal, airport, seaport, noong MERS coronavirus, no? Natsambahan ko lang yun. Hindi naman report sa akin ni Secretary Ona. Dumaan ako sa bahay sa Times, nanonood sila ng news, nakita ko na meron din umanong pasahero raw galing sa Middle East, dumating dito. At uh, hindi maliwanag na istorya after that. So, I talked to Secretary Ona, at hindi, kami, hindi rin maliwanag yung usapan namin. Dulo na, na-asked him to convene a meeting. No? Uh, to call in all of his personnel, undersecretaries, assistant secretaries, bureau chiefs, yung concerned people in the Bureau of Quarantine, concerned BID officials, DFA officials, pati yung PNP. So we had a meeting that lasted from 10.30 to 3.30 a.m. No? Tapos describe ano ba yung problem? There was a person, he's supposed to have been tested positive for MERS in the country where it originated from. He left before the results came out. And uh, we were told, para sa, something like, he was in, in the country already for about 12 hours. So briefing, na, how is it? How do you contact it? How do you contract that disease? So, um, Holy Week, ang daming taong wala na sa Metro Manila. Tapos yung, ang suggestion ng WHO, yung World Health Organization, people who are three people in front of you, hindi man rows, no? Parang one directly in front of you, one to the left and to the right, three on, the, on your left and your right, three behind. Tapos kung na-expose, yung lahat nung yun, kakausapin nyo raw, papakiusapan na huwag sila lalabas ng bahay nila at kung pwede huwag sila lalabas sa kwarto nila, at kung sakasakali magkaroon ng simptomas, eh, pa ipaalam sa who. Ngayon, sabi ko lang, nag-uusap kami, oh, realistic ba yun? Somebody works in the Middle East a year, two years. Darating sa Pilipinas, hindi marami susundo. Walang anak, inaanak, nayayakap, hinahanap yung pasulubong. Direct contact raw at that time ang theory ng transmission. Uh, Pagpunt na uwi, yung kumpari mo na, pare, nandiyan ka na pala, hindi tayo mag-beer muna, ganyan, na, tagal mo walang alcohol. Pa, pwede mo ma-isolate na para realistic ba to isolate yourself voluntarily? So, yung, I guess, one of the pressures in this job is when they actually reveal the information, there is a person who has tested positive for this disease, which at that point in time had a mortality rate of approaching 40%. No? And he is currently on his way back to Bicol. And we don't know where he is. And he has uh, para four others in the party asawa, anak, at kasambahay na presumably lahat na-expose na kailangan mo i-incubate para makita kung lalabas o hindi. So, yun na nga, yung... I, I don't know, yung... Those are the, some of the challenges. Eh. You don't know, you don't have all of the data. At lala, no? yung follow-up kasi doon, the flight was supposed to contain 418 people. Sabi ko, paano natin mahanap? Sir, uh, may, may time passenger manifest, mayroong passport. The passport will contain all of the data. We are accessing all government databases, no, yung, di ba, POEA, OWA, etc. Pati PhilHealth yata. Sa any and every database to determine their actual residences. Tapos, yun, may, may mga funny moments doon na may asawa na nakontak na, may nang alam niya, hindi pa scheduled lumuwi yung asawa niya ng tatlong buwan. Yung mga ganun, no? Tapos yung 418, naghiwalay kami ng 3.30 na umaga, 
Siyempre, hindi ko naman pwede tawagin na alas 8 lahat ng inutusan kong kumilos na dahil kumikilos pala sila. Binigyan ko na hanggang mga lunch time eh. Mga 12.30 or so para mag-follow up. Ano na ang balita? Ang napagbuhusan nun, si Renel Mendras na kapsig dahil sabi niya, yung 480 na hinahanap natin kagabi, 820 na ngayon. Sabi ko, paano nanganak yung isang eroplano yan? Sagot niya, yung, pas- yung data raw natin, mas- manifest na andun, pero da- wala yung passport number nung iba or marami. So, kinuha sa database ng DFA at maraming Juan de la Cruz, maraming Juana de la Cruz, nagkapare-pareho. Kasi yung nasabi nila, pag may passport number, may birthday, iba-iba yun, mahina yung chance sa may duplication. So, I would just ask you, no, pag full transparency and we told you everything that was transpiring, no, you know, I wonder if uh, we had more panic. Bibili ng mga gamot na yung parang prophylactic, na mali pala na mawawala effic- efficacy pag dumating yung tamang sakit. And that's just one of the instances na you need to get the information. We want to share as much as possible, but we also do want to ensure that there's no panic. At, you know, kompletoy ko na rin kwento, no? There was another flight, babae naman, who was already demonstrating symptoms. No? And it took a while to find her Uh, hindi ko maalala kung ilo-ilo siya umuwi o Mindanao eh. Tapos itetest. When she tested negative, nila na may hinanap yung other passengers in that plane. So parang ordinary flu lang yung sa kanya. When that was winding down, and I'm talking, siguro Sunday yung babae, Saturday o Sunday yung babae, uh, by mga Tuesday of the following week, may incident naman sa Mindanao, about 30 people either an, fell ill after uh, handling a sick horse or eating the horse, and about nine of them died. Medyo matasa naman yung nine out of 30. What was this disease? Tinapos natin lahat ng tests available in the country. We asked Japan Health. Dulo, Australia naka-identify. It's a disease uh, transmitted by bats. And when they excrete, no, their excretions fall on the grass. The grass is eaten by the horse. The horse gets sick. And ang hassle doon sa next episode, it was just, again, no, mga two days after humupa, yung apat do sa 30, 23 o 30 na nagkasakit, apat doon, walang contact doon sa horse. They were all medical professionals. Two of whom died. No? Sabi ko, parang nakaring na tayo yung animal to human, pero yung, after that, animal, human, tapos human, parang bago yun. Pero yun ang point, na-identify eventually, uh, mahusay yung LGU, they isolated this barangay, uh, hindi na nag-spread. Pero sa, sa, at the end of this whole thing, I had to, para I talked to the DOH personnel in particular, sabi ko, uh, you know, you, you, you've responded to the challenge, you needed very little prompting from me, we refined your systems. Pero kung pwede, huwag na muna tayo magkita ulit dahil medyo nakaka- <laughs> nakakapuno kayo ng anxiety. <laughs> And of course, uh, after that, yung Ebola scare. No? So, ang dami ko ng pamilya na pamilyar sa bureaucracy ng ating DOH. But I'd like to assure everybody that DOH, uh, together with the rest of government, no, has really improved. Yung, again, sa MERS, they were implementing what was the established practice as advocated by the World Health Organization. I've been told that they, yung how we handled our own potential outbreak of this disease is already being copied and being recommended. They actually even have a policy right, called para the no regrets policy. Imbis na, sige, konti, di ba, limited yung intrusion. Person, uh, possibly infected, and those in the immediate vicinity. You know, I had to ask, kasi, a flight from the Middle East is about eight hours. The person never went to the bathroom, the restroom never, and while traversing, never encountered turbulence that he managed to touch somebody near the, uh, the aisles. No? Did not talk to somebody else in a different section of the plane. Did not suffer turbulence there. Sabi ko, para hindi complete yata yung, yung safeguard. Hanapin natin isa, o hanapin that case lima, hanapin na natin the rest of the passengers. Tapos tinay-tinap na. Foreigners, for instance, when they list address, They list home addresses. Useless, dahil nandito sa Pilipinas, saan dito? So that has been again refined. Yung na-implement yung Quarantine Act of 
meron na ngayong mga stock knowledge yung ating concerned agencies on fulfilling every requirement of that Republic Act. So that has also improved. Tapos syempre, yung capabilities, equipment, uh, training to for all of this has really been wrapped up. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir.